is it conserved when you make the main smart? So the parental copy number, is it the same when you put that mitochondria in different backgrounds? So, I won't speak for all mice or, or for all mixed animals, but in, in, in our mice, there were no uh, observed differences in mitochondrial copy number that would have been borne out in uh, different um, band size in our, in our, in our haplotyping and then in our, uh, our SIP analysis. But it is important to keep a, keep a track of that because that's why we, we normalize all of our experimental data by, by mitochondrial. Um, well, we did citric synthase for the enzyme complex assays. But also a lot of times in the lab, we'll, we'll look at um, by mitochondrial copy number instead of just by protein. Because you know you could see great effects, but that could just be as a function of there being a new different amount of mitochondria. And I know that with uh, with Dr. Welch, what we did when we saw that there were the uh, the kiss expressing cells were, were suppressing metastasis because of upregulation of, mit of mitochondria, we had to go in there and count. You know, we had to see like you don't know because a lot of those dyes, right? They take up into the mitochondria, and that doesn't necessarily reflect whether you have more of them or just larger. So. Time to tease those out. Um, we didn't. We didn't do something quite so dramatic in this report, but we don't have any reason to think that there's different amounts of mitochondria in our mixed animals. Right. So we didn't. Others have, and it's actually a really good report uh, by uh, Lynn out of the Pollard Group, and it's. I read it a lot. It's good. No, um, they basically histologically categorized polyaminal T tumors uh, in a time course, and uh, side by side with, with human breast tumors in a time course uh, at similar stages. And the summary of the report basically is that the polyaminal T is such a good model, A, because it's hormone dependent, most transgenic, uh, genetically engineered mice are not hormone dependent, and secondarily because um, it follows the same sort of uh, histological pattern uh, from an increased stage and grade. So early, earlier, you do see levels of estrogen receptor and progestin receptor, and they have a bit of a spike, and then as the tumor gets more aggressive and becomes metastatic, you see those dramatically diminish, and ERB2 goes up, and segment B1 goes up. So it's the same sort of uh, expression pattern that you see in the presentation of aggressive cancer that's developing in humans. But I didn't do that, they did. So that's something that uh, we, we could look at, uh, maybe not immediately, but certainly soon. We didn't uh, address the uh, specific influx of the, of the glucose and all the carbons that were being either taken from glucose or from glutamine. But absolutely, especially in, in culture, lots of tumor cells become glutamine addicted and they've demonstrated that they can't function without that. And also that would be interesting too because that glutamine is converted to glutamate and provides uh, metabolic equivalents in the carbon uh, TCA cycle. Which, so that's sort of part of the, 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 the general overarching theme that I was trying to get at. Like, yeah, we're seeing differences in the four, the four or five of these points. We're seeing gross observational differences, but we're not entirely sure because there's a whole lot that could be going on in, uh, in response because it's a very uh, homeostatic process, as, you, as you're aware, during metabolic work. So a lot can be uh, adjusted uh, in effect. In case. Yes. Uh, very nice talk. So, so one of them was. Okay, did you look at the protein composition of the mitochondrial catalytic subunit? Didn't look at, at that. It would be cool to see. Um, first of all, I would imagine they would be structurally a little bit different. The changes, one was in the uh, catalytic unit for cytochrome oxidase, but then the, the second subunit and then the, the complex one difference was technically structural and involved enough. But if you're a structural subunit and you're involved in membrane, membrane association and then proton transport, I think you can't really separate that from the catalytic processes of the of the enzyme, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a catalytic subunit uh, technically. But we didn't we didn't go ahead and look at the uh, the the way the aggregate the way the enzymes actually were structurally. But that would be cool to see if they were yeah, different. Yes. yes. Or if they're of different sizes or something. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, guys.